In this tutorial, we'll cover how to build a light woods hex for Battletech. I'll also mention 1.25 inch hexes a lot, but I actually use 1.5. I do not know what I was thinking. Enjoy! Hello, and welcome to what is potentially going to be many videos on this subject, but we're going to talk about how to create Battletech terrain, as this has been a question that has been very adamantly asked by quite a few people. And, uh... I figure it might as well reveal the secret. The secret is, I don't know what I'm doing. And quite frequently, I end up experimenting with whatever I have available to see if I can get to it. So if there's any advice I can ever give anyone, it's always don't be afraid to try. And then just try to figure out what you did wrong and see if you can do anything better. But in the light of that, let me teach you what I know and what you can avoid. And uh, today we're going to discuss trees tree hexes. Now before you uh, get started you need to understand the scale of the terrain that you're working with. Now I I like the hex system for Battletech because it makes the game very simple and elegant and it plays very quickly. There's a lot of people that will disagree with me on that saying that the miniature rules are the best. I am not going to disagree with you. The miniature rules definitely have a lot of flair to them but I prefer just being able to count things out and never have to break out a tape measure. Before you start your Battletech terrain experience, you should know what kind of size you're working with. Like I said before, these are 1.25 inch hexes. Uh, I feel one and a quarter is probably the best to work with because it gives you enough room to put the mech on the inside and it gives you enough room on the outside to put a little bit of flair to let the people know what kind of terrain that you are working with. Again, this is going to be a mix of functionality and uh, art, I guess, but whenever it comes to a playing piece, you should always, always, always make sure that the intent of the playing piece and the functionality of the playing piece takes precedence over whatever it looks like. So always keep that in mind when you're making something. If you're thinking, oh man, this would look cool, you always have to ask yourself, does it make a decent playing piece? Because there's a lot of playing pieces that, again, they look nice, but how, how do they function in the game? And is it clear? And woods is something that is easy to do. Now, on my uh, hex boards and all the Battletech uh, matches that you've seen me record, I use a 1.25 inch uh, hex map. You can go out to 1.5. I found that uh, looks nice too. Uh, the normal hex map is 1.125 or something like that. It's not a full inch. It's, it's not an inch even. It's just a little bit over. And uh, that's really going to be up to you whether you choose to use it. I use uh, HOTS mats to uh, for all my uh, felt mats. I also use Monday Night uh, Productions. And you'll find that both of those release their mats and products about as often as I release my bat wrap. So be, be prepared to wait just a little while if you put one in. Uh, I found that uh, usually it takes them about a month to actually release them, but they're worth it. They're very worth it. I have not gotten a piece of uh, gaming paraphernalia. <laughs> I have never gotten that much mileage out of anything that I have out of those hex maps from uh, Monday Night uh, Productions and and uh, Hots Mats. This what I'm holding right here is a template. I purchased these from. Gamecraft minis. It's something that I actually had to explicitly ask for because if you look under their bases section, they reproduce bases of all kinds of different sizes and forms. And I asked them to produce this larger one because what you can do is you can take those smaller ones and you can glue them together or you can have them create this big template by itself and then he'll, he'll notch all these in there. So again, functionality takes precedence. You can see clearly where the hexes are and when you put this on top of the the felt map, it lines up perfectly. There's no cutting, no guessing. You don't have to do anything. This is really cheap. I think like 40 cents or something like that. Or maybe it was a dollar. I, I think it was well worth the investment because it's no hassle. Again, functionality over everything. You just place it down on the field. You don't have to worry about it lining up or that you accidentally cut something wrong. Now, to make your your woods. Again, we have our template. It's going to line up with our hex map that we purchased earlier with that 1.25 inches. And to make the actual trees is really simple. I use toothpicks. Toothpicks are really easy. They're really easy to come by. Uh, these guys 
come to like a million to a box, maybe like two, three bucks if you spend more than that, uh, please let me know. I'm curious to know if you've spent a lot more for toothpicks. Uh, you don't need the mint kind or anything like that. This is just toothpick. Now there is a trick to it. Now first, like I said, functionality over everything. You need to know whether or not you're making heavy woods or light woods, as there's a difference in battle tech. Now for light woods, I always put just a couple trees on there. For heavy woods, I usually line it around with thick bushes so it looks denser. And then you'll also find in the bat reps that I, I actually have a canopy that I put on top of it to make it just look that much more dense whenever you see it. But there is a trick to it, even with light woods. Because whenever you put a mech in one of these hexes, they're always going to overhang a little. This is especially true for models that was produced in, say, the late 90s, 99 to maybe 2003 or so, when a lot of the models that were coming out of Ironwind Metals kind of drifted over into the uh, end scale kind of realm of things, almost 12, 15 millimeter-ish. And they, they'll, they'll hang out. Even some of the other old ones will hang out over their hex base just a little. So there's a way to remedy this. So you don't have your trees sticking up inside this uh, hex template and they don't start cluttering up the mech. Now what I do is I, first I take the tree, now you can break it in half like so, because you don't need them to be that tall. And you need to pick three points. You don't need them on all the points, just three. Now you just take your handy dandy cyanoacrylate this is some uh, thicker stuff, the thick gel. I found that the thick gel works better in almost every instance. And you just put a dab, if it'll cooperate. Now again, you only want a couple trees on every given hex because you don't want to crowd up the hex. But there's, there's exemptions to this, like, in this big area, you only want in three sides because you're going to have a mech and he's going to be always like twisting or turning just a little on either side. But if it's like half the size, you can just put it like on the inner side because they can always hang out just a little on the outside and you won't have the problem. Like I'm having with my glue. There you go. Just put a dab out there and go ahead and glob it on. There you go. Then you take your quote unquote tree. Oh, I skipped a step. Okay, most forest floors don't look, you know, bleach blonde like this. This is what I mean about experimenting. Don't be afraid to make mistakes because I make them all the time. Some people, like Sheneldrak, will point out all the things I do wrong on any given match. He's really good like that. Okay, so... Just let that glue in. Okay, it doesn't want to glue in. So let's go on to uh, the second tip. This is Clump Foliage, you see, by uh, Woodland Cynics. This is a darker color. We are going to use two colors. One of them is kind of a nice olive green, and the other one is kind of a darker green. Always use the darker colors on places that where the foliage is always going to be a little darker. In this case, in order to help prop up our um, little tree, we're going to use the foliage and just clump it together like that. There you go. Now it stands up straight. Now, I mentioned before, we forgot a step. Yeah, the, the floor needs to be colored in. Which, that shouldn't be a problem. You just take a little bit of water, like so. I'm going to use Trusty Dusty Americana. Uh, this is milk chocolate, but you really can't go wrong, just as long as it's a dark brown color. Mix it in with some of that water, because you don't want it to be that thick. And in fact, when we're doing stuff like this, which is kind of like a weird muddy wash. Thinner is better. Just look at that. It has like no consistency to it. It's almost like some swell. Well, it's kind of like milk. Maybe it's watery milk. And then just gab it on. You can't go wrong here. As a matter of fact, the uh, the looser it is, the better. In fact, this is really loose. 
crap, it's too loose. But that's fine, we'll make it work. Just kind of throw it on there, kind of a random swirl. It'll give it like different textures and colors. If it's a little darker, or if it's a little thicker, it'll be a little bit more, there'd be more color variation. But here we've got a real nice, smooth color. So that's, that's nice, that's nice. Now that looks like a forest floor. None of that sandy beach nonsense. Okay, that's fine. If you want, for extra color and variation, experiment. You can't go wrong. There you go. Take a little bit of that extra water. Kind of just mix it around, give it a different colored floor in different places. Can't go wrong. I think I liked it better with this, the, the, the looser color. That's okay. We'll do it better next time. And there we go. You got your nice little floor color. It's going to dry off real fast. Uh, but we're going to do this tutorial very quickly. We're not going to wait for that. Now, we've already got our first uh, tree down there. We just got to break it up. And if you want, you can always uh, ink these or draw or, you know, paint them. It's up to you. Extra credit if you do. I'm not going to grade you. And then you find the other opposite three points that you're going to glue trees to. Blue can't go wrong. If you have to drag it somewhere, drag it along the hex spine. See, there we go. Now we take your your tree, quote unquote. Put it over here. It's okay to put a little clump foliage around it. Kind of stick it on there. The clump foliage will just kind of soak up the the glue. And the clump foliage will also stick to the bottom of this container if you let it. The trick is to show it who's boss. Slap it around a little. Okay. There you go. Just like that. Voila. Ta-da! You'll notice that it's it's in alternating areas. We don't have any two hex spines that are connecting. Now, notice how I said before, if it's okay, go ahead and put the glue on the hex spine. If you've got like a little extra, this is why. Because it helps. You know, again, functionality, of, functionality takes precedent over everything. So it makes it more clear where the hex begins and where the hex ends. Just keep repeating the process, like so. Now you could drill these. I have on some of uh, my uh, hex bases for trees, and then uh, just kind of countersink the your uh, tree trunk in there. I haven't found that's been terribly necessary, or at least it doesn't provide any kind of any advantage. They all kind of just snap at the the tree trunk sooner or later. In which case you just kind of glue another toothpick on or just kind of live with a little bit of deforestation. I definitely got to touch up on some of my trees. They they're a little worse for wear. But a lot of them, you see, they've been in continuous use for like three years. So, I'll call that a good run. Put like a little daub along that. Uh, this is going to be the tree. 
tree, tree, just like that. Now, for the forest floor, I've also had success mixing in like pine uh, needles down there. Yeah, this, this glue has almost had it. Uh, pine needles, kind of mixing all kinds of little flotsam down there on the ground to give the forest floor some sort of texture. Uh, go right ahead. I've had a lot of uh, success actually mixing it into a uh, thicker uh, paint and then just letting it act as kind of like an emulsion and binding agent. It uh, sometimes it, it looks okay. It's it's really up to you. Just experiment. That's that's all I can ever suggest. Experiment. Be do not be afraid of taking risks. Especially when it comes to battle tech terrain, because there's, uh, there's not a whole lot out there. But hopefully, if you see this video, you can pass it on to your friends and then say, Oh, wow, this is easy. I can do that. And off you go. Just like that. Uh, there is something to be said about taking the sharp ends off of these things. I don't do that, but I prick myself all the time on the terrain when I'm not careful. That one's a little loose. Now again, it's not really necessary to put the clump foliage around the base of the tree. I just do it so that it it makes it all nice and steady so it glues on its own it also makes it look nice so it's, it's, it's a double win and the foliage again absorbs the glue kind of holds everything together keeps the tree intact We're almost done. See, I got five minutes on the clock. No, 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 more than that. I had to stop at once because the glue wasn't pro behaving. I do love Battletech. I do love Battletech so much. It's the only game where you can simulate a fist fight in the same game system that's simulating an, a dropship burning up in orbit. Now, I will never subscribe that to being good game design, because frankly that's that's horrendous scope creep. You shouldn't shouldn't have that in the same game. Fun though. Okay, there you go. Now you have uh, the tree, the, the tree setting. You can end it there, and uh, uh, you would have my kudos. But we are not going to end there. We're going to finish up a few more of these trees while I still have glue to do it. This is where we take out our clump foliage again, Woodland Scenics. We want a lighter shade. If you're really artistic, you can take these and a couple different shades and then just lower the shades as you go down to represent a, a falling color of foliage. Again, just stick some glue on this thing. And be careful, if you glue your finger and then you glue the foliage, you will just glue foliage to yourself and it will never come off. So be careful. Yeah, okay, see I just did it. See? That'll never come off. So, you know, wear gloves. It helps. Just take... Now this is really good if you can get those clump foliage that are already really, really big. This is the bottom of my clump foliage box. It's... It's not great. It's, it's, it's the odds and ends. But if you get those big honking suckers, 
and then you just kind of skewer it with a little bit of glue, you're golden. There you go. And that creates a nice little tree effect. You can uh, add more of them on there because some of those trees look a little, a little mill housey. Just like this, and then you can create like little branch effects. And now you got yourself a nice little light woods. Just keep uh, doing this to all the other ones. It should take you another uh, three to ten minutes, and you'll be done. Then you can add extra foliage down here on the bottom. Again, notice all the different colors and variations of uh, the really milky paint. It created a nice little effect on the ground. Again, minimal amount of effort, maximum amount of detail. So. If you uh, do this on your own and want to you know, give it a shot, let me know. I'd like to see what you come up with. This, is, uh, this has been a little bit of a tutorial, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it.